Wayne, uh, I want to talk more about the whole global picture with you and then take some calls, but some funny or interesting stories about your brother or your family, because people just love to hear them, uh, that uh, you've never told before or that you uh, had never told on the radio before. Uh, some interesting stuff about uh, the young Ron Paul. Well, I think one of the most interesting things that I think of is he used to work in a drugstore. So we called him the soda, soda jerk of the day. <laughs> and he would use a bicycle to go a mile, work, and then come home. And he always worked late in the evening, up till 10 o'clock, to close the store and then bike home. Well, he always had a ritual in his own mind as to how quickly he could get home. So he was always timing himself. But one evening he was coming home and going up the hill and he was pumping so hard and so fast that he forgot to look in front of him and he ran into a parked car. <laughs> and that parked car demolished the front of his bike. But he picked up the bike and walked the other half mile to get home. And when he got home, his collarbone was sticking outside of his shirt. But wow. that's that's just the type of person he was, and and he wanted to make sure nobody took his bike, so he dragged it home with him. But <laughs> that's just that's just the way he is, and most of the five of us are fairly competitive. My oldest brother has his Ph.D. in mathematics. The next brother is a doctor of divinity, and of course, Ron has three different degrees in medicine. My next brother has a doctor of divinity also, so I have a brother who's a Lutheran minister and one that's a Presbyterian minister. So good quality, the, good quality salt of the earth. And you're a CPA, right? That's correct. They wanted me to be an undertaker so that they could take care of everybody, bring them into the world, raise them, educate them, and I could bury them. So we decided that if I did that, I would have a monopoly on life and the government wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> uh, just amazing uh, stories hearing that. Um, some of the family background, I I is the family on both sides German or uh, where do the Pauls come from? Well, my, my grandfather came to this country as a 12-year-old from Germany and came after his father came here before him. Uh, my mother was French Irish from Alsace, Lorraine, uh, but I think it was the close knit family and uh, our Christian ties that uh, uh, really was a, a bulwark of our life. The, the, one of the other interesting things about my brother, and he still has it, when he first went to Congress, he bought a little Chevy Chevette to go from his apartment to Congress every day. And that Chevette was two doors, green. He still has it, by the way. But there's pictures out of that Chevette next to Tip O'Neill's uh, limousine. And he always was proud of showing that in his congressional office or at home. So it was the interesting contrast between... A very liberal individual spending your money in a very conservative just trying to represent you. Absolutely. I want to take calls in the next segment, but, but shifting gears in the big picture. Eugenics. I know you study banking, the Federal Reserve, but, but the overall plans of the globalists, you, you told me you've seen the Obama deception that you're in. Give me your view on eugenics, the master plan, the type of people that are the collectivists and the type of societies they build. You know, really is an illustration of what the price is to pay if we that aren't parasites don't get things under control. We leave the world to these people. Yes, and that's difficult to really discuss and talk about because it's in an area that, you know, I look at my life and our family's life, and as long as we stay the course and understand our responsibility. We believe that those types of things 
will get settled by a much higher power than us, and that it is just something that at this stage of our lives we have to talk about, learn about, and try to understand, but it's difficult to determine how we might fight it. It's just... uh... It's just incredible to really see the New World Order come out in the open and uncloak itself, but it's even more incredible to see the people rise against it. It's just so exciting. Oh, I do. I think we live in the most exciting times of our life, and I just, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to come back and take two quick segments of phone calls uh, for Wayne Paul, and we'll give out any websites or any contact info or any books you think we should read uh, You know, from your perspective. But I did want to bring up, a little side issue of the attacks on your brother, and the video's finally out of it. I think he did very well getting past the guy and getting out of there. Uh, uh, but uh, what do you think of that horrible Sasha Cohen Baron uh, trying to set up your brother? Of course, it blew up in his face. Or are you even aware of that? I, I, I am vaguely aware of it and saw a little bit of it. But I often sit back and admire my brother because... He, he believes as long as you're telling the truth and as long as you're putting forth the right effort, those types of attacks won't last very long. I kind of like seeing him get mad, though. For those that don't know, we haven't played it here because we're not being given an attention. I might, though. I mean, because the video's out now. Ron Paul almost pops him, and, and it looks like shoves him. He's like, get out of here! It's kind of like you tell a cow to get out in the middle of the road. Uh, just, just, just incredible. But the media tried to demonize him for that.